Welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. Today we're going to be taking a look at the last video segment of the Dofer A174 series. We're going to be looking at a brief demonstration of quadraphonic sound and then just kind of do a short little wrap up uh, on the A174 joystick controller. We've kind of been looking at a lot of different things um, along the series. Uh, we did a little demonstration uh, on how you can kind of uh, plug in the outputs from our joystick controller and control the BBD in the previous demonstration as well as a couple of simple demonstrations. Um, but this time we're looking specifically at a quadraphonic demonstration. And uh, quadraphonic, for those of you who haven't heard of it in one of the previous videos, um, is basically the idea of four speakers um, in either a room or in some kind of uh, open space where there's going to be four points that uh, sound can be transmitted to. Um, now, I'm going to put up a little patch on the screen, and I want you to take a look at it, because this is kind of what we're looking at here on our Dofer system right now. So if you look on this diagram, uh, you can see that on the right-hand side of our diagram, uh, we have sort of our four speaker positions. And uh, these, if you had them in a room, you know, you could move the position of your sound. Uh, right now, uh, we're listening to our signal in stereo, which uh, is going to limit how I can move the things around. So what I did was I kind of rearranged this to fit within the stereo field. Um, before I talk about the patch, because I'm going to talk about it a, a little bit, um, I want to kind of explain how I situated everything. So look at the diagram here, and you see that the virtual position up on the top right quadrant uh, is actually up on the top right. So that would be somewhere over here. Now in the stereo field, for you, that's going to correspond to about the 2 o'clock position. And then if I go down to the bottom right-hand corner, that should correspond to the far right uh, or fully right uh, speaker. Now, if I go up to the far left in the diagonal direction, you should be hearing this at around 11 o'clock. And then all the way on the bottom left, you guessed it, you should be hearing it on the far left. Now, the positioning stuff is actually happening here inside the patch, out here on the, on the Dofer system. Uh, but the other part where it's sort of panned, I sort of rearranged it, that part I actually did in my DAW. So uh, I just wanted to let you know what you're actually hearing as we sort of move forward through this patch. Uh, so now with that kind of out of the way, and now we know, you know what directions our joystick is taking us over here. Um, I want to talk about the patch a little bit, uh, but I do want to kind of uh, sort of tell you in advance that as I was patching this, because you can look at the patch here, it's pretty dense uh, down here. You know, we have a couple of VCAs hooked up. Uh, I have all four outputs of my quad VCA down here routed out to my uh, recorder. Um, I also have, if you look at the top segment over here, uh, I have two input or two outputs going from my joystick controller uh, to a multiple. Both signals are being multiplied as well as then fed over to a voltage inverter, which we haven't talked about yet, um, which is then inverting the signal. So I'm actually using both the uh, normal uh, direction voltage up and down or positive and negative, as well as the inverted to sort of create the entire patch. And if you look at the diagram over here, it's going to be kind of what you're seeing. Over on the far left uh, is your joystick position. And as you go down, you can see that your Y and your X are both routed to the A175 inverter. Uh, but in addition, let's just use Y as an example. Uh, if you look at the first Y underneath the A174, uh, you can see that one of, 
one of the lines that goes off of it goes straight to the A175, and then the other one that sort of branches down from the Y underneath the A174 box over there on the far left um, goes all the way over to an A130. And then this sort of also happens with, let's see, where's the other one? Uh, let's see, our X positioning. If you look at the X immediately next to that, it goes down to another A175, as well as if you follow that line all the way across, it goes all the way further down to a total of four VCAs uh, across the whole patch. And uh, I got some help from some of my uh, compatriots over at Muff Wiggler uh, to kind of understand what this patch, because there's kind of a lot going on in this thing. Um, and uh, the best explanation, I guess, came from D. Kramer, who uh, sort of explained that, I guess, the first two VCAs back on our diagram, which if we look at the patch over here, uh, this is actually VCA, I'm calling it VCA1, uh, but in the diagram, it's the one that is underneath audio in. Uh, that's what I'm calling VCA1. And then VCA2, in the patch over here is right there. And then that one, uh, if you look at the diagram, is gonna be the one immediately underneath what I call VCA2. Um, so D. Kramer, anyway, was explaining to me that um, that one actually creates you know, a stereo uh, sort of movement. And then the other four VCAs in our diagram are creating the movement in the, the quad space. I uh, hope I got that right. At any rate, um, as I was sort of delving into this patch, I realized, wow, this is a really big topic. I didn't want to sort of overshadow the A174 series because I still want to sort of limit it to it being about the A174. Uh, so I'm going to do a special video segment a little bit later, maybe next week or the week after, specifically on Quadraphonic and looking at this specific patch in more detail. Uh, but this time I thought it would be useful just to kind of go in and sort of play around with this thing. Um, so, you know, we saw that it plays up in this quadrant. And then if I go down to the bottom, it does that. We go over to this quadrant, you should hear it over there. If I go up to this quadrant, you should hear it at around 11 o'clock. So in the center, we have zero. Now, right now, uh, if you wanted to kind of get a little bit better of a sort of uh, atmosphere, I guess, uh, you can increase the gain um, that's on my VCA, because down here on my VCA, I actually have it turned all the way down. Uh, but if we bring it up a little bit, it won't actually ever take you to quite silence. So if I bring that up a little, bring this one up a little, we can still get a little bit of that spatial movement. And then when I'm at center, I actually have a little bit of signal, so it's not so abrupt and moving from nothing, or almost nothing, to then the signal. And it just helps to add to that sense of movement. Now for my sound source, I chose to patch uh, my A 155, which is down here. Um, I chose to patch just a few notes from there over to my A111 right there. And uh, on the A111, I have that going out uh, over to the A121 multi-mode filter right here. And then I have the two outputs, the notch and the low pass going down to the bottom into my uh, VCA1 and VCA2. If you remember back to our diagrams, the ones that are at the audio input section of our patch. And then from there, they go out to their respective locations in VCAs. Uh, one of them is actually malted, this one here, which is VCA2, um, and then goes to actually uh, inputs 3, and I believe input 4, yes. And then the other one I have routed out from here, from this VCA, uh, over here into this top section, which is over by my A154, uh, and I have this multiple serving the same purpose as my stack cable over here. I ran out of multiples, uh, that's a crime. I, I should actually have more multiples in my system, uh, so that's one thing I'm gonna need to pick up. Uh, but at any rate, I just uh, 
wanted to kind of explain a little bit about what's going on in this patch. Now, since I'm using two inputs of my A121, uh, if I wanted to, I could inject any other signal. Uh, but essentially, this is what's being moved, or what I chose to move anyway. Um, if we wanted to sort of vary it up a little bit, we could try something else uh, for our our signal. Uh, like for example, let's see, we can try taking this out. Just a simple little drone there. But what I really wanted to do was I wanted to take my clock out from here and go over to my quantized stored random voltages get in the random notes right there and then if I can grab one more cable take some of the random notes out and then go out from my random go over to my quantizer got some fun results with this and then out from my quantizer over into my VCO. Oh, let me put it in CV1, I'm sorry. Now right now, you may notice that it's triggering at certain intervals, which is actually occurring via the A143-1. It's a module we haven't talked about, but it's basically giving an envelope uh, out, and it's going up to our filter, so that's what's kind of creating that little that little movement right there. Now, if I wanted to, uh, let's see, I have my triggers actually from over here, but if I wanted to take that out, we would get sort of no sound, and if I wanted to use one of my random gates, that might add a little bit of variety. So let's just try it. I'm gonna adjust the lower one. Okay, so now we have kind of a different little sound source going on. And now let's go ahead and play with the joystick to get it to kind of change position. And I can move this kind of continuously if I wanted to. So, tons and tons of fun. Uh, the essential patch is there, uh, and so at this point, you could really inject anything. I mean, you could inject your own music, or, you know, bass line from somewhere else, or even a drum machine if you wanted to, and kind of move it around in the quad space. Um, but for the most part, we just wanted to do a simple demonstration this time. Um, I do want to thank you for watching, uh, not just this video, but the series as a whole. Uh, I hope that you found it useful. I know I found it useful in my learning uh, in the modular world, which I still actually am learning every single day. Um, let's see. Hopefully by next week, I'll have started putting together uh, the, the segments for the quadraphonic patch, which is basically going to be this patch in depth, but you know we'll build it from the ground up. Um, might take you know a few different takes because uh, I did have a few technical difficulties, nothing, nothing too serious though. Uh, but at any rate, again, thank you for watching and see you next time.